what's this I hear, huh? What am I hearing? That you are doubting that I am the good father who gives good things? Why do you doubt me? Why do you disrespect me? Hmm? Why do you think that I cannot make good on my promises? Mark my words. Mark my words. If I say to you that I'm going to do something, then you need to believe. Gabish, go ask around. Go ask around. Yeah, you in the back. Go ask around. You ask those who know me as the good father. Yeah, my promises are always good. When I promise to protect, I protect. When I promise peace, I deliver. When I promise to love, I love unconditionally. Make sure of one thing, my friend. You understand this. When I do things, I do them big. If you want good things, then all you have to do is ask me, the good father, and I will give you good things. Now that's an offer you don't refuse. But God says it's good to enjoy the good of all your labor that, he, that you take under the sun all the days of your life, which God gives you, for it is your portion. In other words, it's a good thing, men of God. It's a good thing that after you come to church and you've given God his time and you, 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 you've you done the things you're supposed to do with your family, that you are able to sit home this afternoon and look at that big screen TV that you were able to buy with your paycheck and watch the game and see San Diego <laughs> play against, I forgot who they playing, the Steelers. That's why, because the Steelers are going to win, so it don't matter. Anyway, no. look at all them Steelers fans up in here. God don't have a problem with that in his right place. In fact, he kind of enjoys seeing you enjoy the good that he brought you. Like a parent at Christmas time. And when you get to be a certain age, Christmas isn't really, it's really never about you in the first place. But you know what I mean? When you, when you start talking about opening gifts and stuff as a kid, you know, you're all excited for gifts for yourself. But you get to a certain place where you become a parent and it's not so much about what you get during that time. You're actually more excited to see how your kids respond to what they got. And the Bible says, it talks about if our natural love is like that, how much more does our Heavenly Father feel that way about us? So Matthew 7 talks about Verse 19, and some people may say, well, that just might apply to, you know, God has given you just enough. Well, look at verse 19, and this is about to really tear up some people's doctrine. We are kicking over some sacred cows in here. Ooh. I mean, we should believe what the Bible says. And just because somebody has reverend in front of their name does not mean anything. I, I, I'm tired of seeing Christians ruin their lives because of what somebody said in the pulpit. It, the, this is the manual for living for a Christian. Without this, there would be no Christianity. We wouldn't know anything about God. Amen. Following Jesus Christ, how to live, all of that. So how dare someone teach something that is contrary to this book or not research the book well enough and then tell you that something that was taught from the book isn't true? You've heard it said many times, never take the word of a preacher. If they can't show it to you in the Bible, throw it out with the rest of the trash. If they can, now it's not just that preacher. Now you found out God's will and you need to go ahead and live your life according to it. Accept it, live your life according to it. 